The next speaker is someone who, who actually gave us an amazing presentation this time last year. It's, it's, it's Helen from the Lycra company. Hello, Helen. Hey. Hi. How are you? Good? I'm doing really well, thank you. Nice. Thank nice. You. Really, really lovely to see, really lovely to see you again. Um, thank you. I'm excited about your, for like, your for like, presentation. And um, I'll just say, take it away. I will. I'll share my screen. So hopefully I'll, this I'll will work. My, I'll turn my screen off. Lots of luck. Thank you. So thank you, Ravenborn and Kingpins, for inviting me today. Um, my name is Helen Latham, and as Moshin said, I work for the Lycra company. So today I'll be talking to you about a synthetic fibre, um, an elastomeric fibre, which is Lycra. So the, the, the title of my talk is The Science and Magic of Stretch Fibres and Fabrics. So basically I'll be talking about elastomeric fibres and our branded offer. Then I'll be talking about why and how genes got stretchy, especially why. And then just something that fascinates me is how technology and fashion can sometimes come together to create a new trend and that's what's happened with with skinny jeans and then hopefully the last five minutes I will talk a little bit about sustainability and what that means for a big fiber producer of man-made fibers like the Lycra company. So just to talk about the company I work for we are a global company with a headquarters in the United States but we're owned by Shandong Rui who's a Chinese investment company so we have six factories around the world and many offices. We work mainly in the places where textiles are produced. Um, we are a fibre producer, so we make fibres, but we also work along the textile chain. Um, so we don't just check out fibres and then let them go into the world without any protection. We, we work with fibre. Uh, we sell the fibre to spinners. Spinners will then sell the fibre to fabric producers. Fabric producers will then sell the fibre fabrics to garment makers. Garment makers might then send it onto a packager. The packager will send, send it then to a retailer. So very much by the time it gets to the retailer, some of the benefits of what we've done at the fiber end can get lost in translation. So my job, for example, is to work with retailers and we talk about innovation and we talk about trying to solve their problems in manufacturing fabrics. So what do we make? Um, we make two kinds of products. One are the elastane products, so that's Lycra. And if you look at the left-hand side of, of the screen, Lycra is our synthetic elastane fiber, and that means it's basically a glorified elastic band. It can stretch up to six times its length and then come back to its original length time after time after time. Um, it was invented in 1958, basically to substitute rubber in women's corsetry. So that's, that was why it was born. The generic name for the actual product is elastane, so very much like cotton, wool, viscose, that's the generic name. Our brand name for that is Lycra. So think of Hoover and vacuum cleaner. Then moving on to the other three products, they're all mainly polyester based. So Lycra T400, that's the yarn there that looks a bit like a snowman lying on its side. This product was invented in the 1990s for the denim industry because that was when a lot of companies were stonewashing jeans, which meant throwing jeans into massive washing machines with pumice stone and bleach. And the stretch jeans that were being produced with Lycra were just not surviving that pretty harsh uh, regime. So we invented a stretchy polyester, and that's what this T400 yarn is. So there's two different sorts of polymer in there, the head and the body of a snowman. One side of the fibre shrinks more than the other in heat, so it turns itself into a, a helix, which then generates some stretch. So that has been used in blends for denim since the 1990s, um, and we will come back to T400 a little later in my presentation. The other two fibres are uh, Coolmax and Thermalite, so they are performance polyesters. So they were invented about 30 years ago, Coolmax, if you look at it, is, is shaped a little bit like a sweetie and it's got channels in it that wick away moisture and it has a very large um, surface area to evaporate moisture to help keep the wearer stay cool and dry. And the other yarn is Thermalite, which is a hollow fibre. So um, polar bears have hollow fibres in, in their fur and those hollow fibres trap warm air from the body and they keep the wearer warm. And just before I move on, because I can't not say it, a lot of people in the UK think that Lycra is a cycling short, and it isn't, it's a fibre. Um, so these are our brands, Lycra, Coolmax and Thermalite. They're pretty well known by most people, um, especially when they're prompted. So now down to the, the nitty gritty of the presentation, I'll start with a quick history of stretch jeans. 
So denim started off as a rough, tough cotton fabric, dyed with indigo, as has already been well explained, and used mainly by manual workers in Italy and France in the late 19th century. So the word denim comes from the French, denim, and the word jeans comes from the, from the French word for Genoa, which is gen. And a Swiss immigrant, uh, Levi Strauss, together with Jacob Davis, invented the American blue jean by patenting the use of rivets instead of stitching in San Francisco in 1873. So that was the birth of the American blue jean. Strangely enough, also in America, lycra fiber was invented in 1958 by DuPont, and it was to replace rubber in women's corsets. So as you can imagine, the combination of denim and elastane was not an obvious one, and it took many years before people decided it might be a good idea. <clears throat> the first stretch jean is said to have been invented by Peter Golding in London in 1978, using a Japanese fabric. <clears throat> Sorry about this. The UK music industry was basically behind the spreading of this trend, and it was the punk singers who couldn't get tight jeans over their feet that started the trend of stretch denim. So why make stretch denim? And the answer is comfort. <clears throat> so if you're sat in a very, very baggy pair of dungarees or a big jumper, you can move around in that, <clears throat> that garment very easily. Um, but if your garment starts getting tighter and closer to your body, the fabric that that garment is making is made of does have to move with your body. Otherwise you get trapped in your garment and they're very uncomfortable. So if you look at the lady on the right hand side of the diagram, her jeans are very tight. If they were not stretched jeans, she would not be able to sit down or walk. So the next two slides are my geeky slides. They're my technical slides, but I will explain to you how to make a stretch woven fabric. Um, because if I don't do it, I don't think there are schools that teach people. So the first diagram here is a diagram of any woven fabric. You've got your warp threads running vertically, which in denim are the blue ones because they're dyed with indigo. And then you have your weft yarns, which are running across the fabric, and they're usually sort of white, cottony. So how to make a stretch fabric. The weaver takes those warp yarns, say you've got 2,000 of them, and the fabric is about 150 centimetres wide. He just spreads those yarns out on the loom, but instead of being 150 centimetres wide, they're 200 or two metres wide. So you've spread out those warp yarns, so they're not sat side by side anymore, they're spaced out. And then you take your lycra fibre, which has been wrapped and covered in cotton and stretched out because it's an elastic band, and you put that across the weft, stretched out, so that when that fabric comes off the loom, the lycra, which is an elastic band, will want to come back. As you let an elastic band go, it wants to come back to its original length. So it will pull that fabric in to the point where those, wet, those warp yarns are sat side by side again. So this is my geekiest slide, so I'm sorry, but it will explain things clearly. So as a fabric comes off the loom, here I've got say 190 centimeters wide, you then, relax that fabric down to its narrowest point. Now, I used to live many years in Italy um, and we used to call this test the spaghetti test. So you take some of your fabric, you cut about a meter off and you chuck it in a pan of boiling water and you cook it for about 10 minutes. And that will show how narrow that woven fabric can get once it's fully relaxed. And the amount of stretch you've then got in your denim fabric is simply the distance between those two widths. So how wide it was and how wide it ends up. And you can do a simple calculation there. You've got 70 centimeters between the width of those two widths. So you've got 58% stretch in that fabric. Now, some denim weavers do heat set fabrics. The main reason they do that is to make sure the width of the fabric is equal. It's not ideal for high stretch denim fabrics because you're basically killing some of the stretch you've then, you've built into that fabric. Um, which is why we don't recommend it. Lycra is quite expensive. You've just built in all that stretch. And then if you, you heat set the fabric, you kill some of the stretch. Now, as fashion students, I would like to advise you all to start looking at composition labels. So every single garment will have them by law. Um, so start looking at them. A classic stretch denim will have 98% cotton and 2% elastane. And the, the elastane is the lycra part. Um, and it's that small 2% of elastane that gives all that stretch. So it's not the more elastane I put in the stretchy the fabric will be. You've built that stretch in with a construction. So the more lycra you fibre you put in, it doesn't alter the stretchiness of the fabric. It's the actual construction that does that. 
So now I'm just going to talk about very high stretch denim because of a solution that was invented by us to sort of help skinny jeans, which were struggling a little bit when they got launched. So over the last 15 years or so, fashion has dictated higher and higher stretch percentage in jeans and young men's jeans. And skinny jean styles have led weavers to produce 50%, 60%, and I'm even looking at one on my desk, 100% stretch denim fabrics. And even with the latest trends for vintage look denim, high stretch characteristics are still important because denim, excuse my language, it's all about the bum. So your, your, your bottom's got to look good in denim. So no matter how wide the style, comfort and ability to move is something consumers do not want to give up on. So again, if you ever end up working in retail or working for a fashion company, uh, you will be looking as you buy fabrics at percentage stretch and percentage growth. Now, stretch and recovery is the ability of any fiber or fabric to be stretched and returned to its original length or shape. So if you've got a piece of denim, you stretch it, will that fabric come back to, to where it was when you started? If that fabric, once it's been stretched about 20 times, doesn't come back to where it was to start with, that's called growth or permanent deformation. And what was happening um, was that when skinny jeans came out, fabrics were growing. So you were putting a garment on which fit, fitted you well in the morning, and by the time you stood up and sat down and walked around and lunchtime arrives, your fabric's bagged out. So the knees have bagged, the bottom's bagged, and you've spent the rest of the day hoiking your jeans up because they're, they're falling down. So what we did as a company was to try and invent a solution for this. Um, and we realized that if a fabric has only about 10% stretch, it's very easy to stretch it and pull it back to its shape. But if it's got about 80% stretch, then it needs quite a bit of muscle and quite a bit of strength, not so much to stretch it, but to get it to come back again, because denim's quite a heavy fabric. And if the fabric is pulled beyond the limit of the muscle that's used, and think of muscle as the lycra, then that, that garment will deform. So what we were trying to do was to find lycra, a strong and muscly friend, to help it with these high stretch denims. So we found lycra T400, which was the stretchy polyester we'd invented in the 90s. If you put that side by side with the lycra inside your cotton yarn, that gives extra muscle and extra strength and recovery for skinny jeans. And we think, maybe we're being arrogant, but we think that has helped keep that trend going because otherwise those jeans were just not performing well. And if you're out looking for a pair of jeans um, and you look at the composition label on a skinny pair of jeans, a really good quality jean will have about 90% cotton. It will have 8% of the T400 yarn in there, which has a generic called Elasto Multiester, which was given to us by the authorities. And the last bit will be Lycra. We have uh, solutions for all different sizes of fit as well, not just super high stretch. So the last bit of the presentation, I will look at sustainability and what uh, a big fibre producer has to think about and should be thinking about for the future um, when we're producing our yarns. The first thing we've been looking at is waste reduction. So anything you do, um, the less waste you make, the better. So we have many programmes to reduce the waste in our production and over 90%, 99% of what we make, we make right first time. Then is to look at the products you're using. Are they safe? Are they toxic? Can you um, dispose of them cleanly? Uh, and we've done a lot of work with the C2C organization on that. And in fact, our basic Lycra product, which is used for wovens in denim, has been gold standarded for the material health it has. Then we've been doing a lot of work on increased garment wear life because a very simple fact is that far less garments would end up in landfill if they were worn for longer. So how do you make consumers wear garments for longer without throwing them away? Then we've been looking at reduced resource usage. So any business which is a factory or any house, um, reduce the amount of energy you're using is key. And then recyclability, which is a key, key message. So we have a family of products which are recycled. Um, earlier it was mentioned about the recyclability. Um, cotton can only be recycled a few times because the fiber lengths in the cotton um, get shorter, but polyesters can be recycled pretty much ad infinitum. And my personal opinion, so it's not sort of my company speaking, it's just me, is that probably we've made enough polyester in the last 60 years um, the best thing we can do with it now is to not have it sitting around or in landfill, but to keep it moving and to keep it being used. 
um, using up petrol and using up resources in the future, the less we do that, the better. But if we can recycle what's already been made and keep recycling it, then we're doing something that's helping the planet. So we used to have uh, Coolmax EcoMade and Coolmax Thermalite, which are products made from 100% post-consumer recycled bottles. And we used to have the EcoMade version and the normal version. So over the, the space of this year and a little bit into next year, we will be converting virtually all our production to the point that we don't have an eco-made version and a normal version anymore. We have ev all the product will be eco-made, so it will all be sustainably sourced. Then moving across to the Lycra T400, so the snow money shaped fiber that's, that's used as a stretchy polyester, we can do the same thing there. So we've used that the body of the snowman is made from the recycled polyester and the head of the poly of the the yarn is made from bio-based material. So that is plant sourced material and we use non-food grade corn to make that product. And then the last product I'll talk about on this page is Lycra EcoMade and it's an interesting one. Um, Lycra EcoMade fibre is our company's first branded spandex that's made with 20% pre-consumer post-industrial recycled materials. So what that is, is taking our product that isn't made right first time and recycling it back into our polymers. But our goal is to make no waste. So ideally, the less we make of this product, the better, because we've got the goal is to make no waste. But until we've got that perfect figure, rather than send product to landfill, it's best probably to recycle it. So here's a quick video just explaining how it's done. Here at the Lycra company, sustainability is, is very important. And one example of that is Lycra EcoMade, uh, where we uh, recycle some uh, pre-consumer waste into a new product. And that's a program that uh, we started looking to, to improve, to help uh, the environment. And in that way, we use internally and avoid sending them to waste or to a landfill. The product itself is no different than, than other types of Lycra yarn fiber in terms of properties or in terms of quality, we make it into the same product. But the way it is made is, is different. We take yarn that for some reason didn't make it into a box. We shred this, we dissolve it into a polymer solution, we mix it with re regular solution, and then we make it into Lycra fiber again. So not only this helps us um, eliminate waste and, and contribute to the environment in that sense, uh, but also uh, allows us to, to give customers something that they, they're looking for and something that the consumer is also looking for. Sustainability is a journey for us and in the journey it's good to have external recognition of the efforts and uh, one example of that is, is GRS, the Global Recycle Certification, where not only uh, we get certified that the product has a recycle contact, but we also do it in a responsible way. And uh, we recently got the certification here in Paulina and that made us very proud. So this is one more way that the Lycra company is committed to delivering more sustainable products to consumers as well as all of our customers in the value chain. So there we are, that, that product is pretty much made mainly in our Brazil site where we have some older machinery which was not allowing us to, to recycle product but it was going to be incinerated. So this just reassumes what I said earlier about the Lycra T400 product and how we're making it more sustainable. And this is Coolmax. Fabric made with Coolmax EcoMade technology wicks moisture away from the body to help keep the wear cool and dry. The special fiber cross sections move moisture to the outside of the fabric where it evaporates quickly. Consumers can feel good about selecting garments engineered with Coolmax EcoMade technology as it's made from 97% recycled resources. So there we are. Um, we are using a, 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 an average of about 11 bottles per gene with, made with Coolmax EcoMade. Um, and if you look, think about the Ellen MacArthur butterfly diagram, which is a very famous um, diagram for sustainability, they talk a lot about recyclability for man-made fibres and biodegradability for natural fibres. And from all the work as a company that we've done into looking at our products and how to make them more sustainable, we think the best way for our particular products is to keep them being recycled and keep it moving. So we don't use up virgin um, petrol, we don't use up the world's resources, but we keep our products moving. Fabric with Thermalite EcoMate technology provides lightweight warmth through durable hollow fibers that create an insulating layer of warm air within the garment. 
Consumers can feel good about choosing garments made with Thermolite EcoMade technology since it's made from 97% recycled resources. So just to say, uh, we, we do work a lot in the denim industry, but we work across many sectors. So we are uh, selling products to intimate wear, active wear, swimwear, and hosiery. Uh, I just particularly work mainly in the denim side. And so we have a lot of information. We have done a lot of work on sustainability. Um, sometimes as a fibre producer, you have to take a stand or a position because there is so much information out there that we have had to take some decisions as a company as to what we're going to do and what we would rather not do. So please, if anyone's interested, go and have a look at that site. And if you want any more information, we do have websites. That's the end of my presentation. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time and thank you for that presentation. I think it's really helpful, especially for the students who, who you know, who have just, who've just, who are in their second year at like university. Obviously they know about stretch denim, but they don't, don't know about the, all the different categories of stretch that like you guys do. So I really appreciate you explaining that in such a great way and express, especially explaining to our students about how, how stretch denim is made, how you just stretch the warp and put it through and then you let, let you actually let yeah, go. And you can't do it without fingers, can you? You can't do it without <laughs> fingers and it really does, it really does explain it really nice, nicely. I remember even last, last year, many people said Helen's presentation was so good and uh, thank you for that. We do have some questions, so let's just double, double check what people have been asking, been asking. Why can EcoMade T400 only be 78% recycled? What's the remainder? What's the remainder? Um, basically, it's a trade-off between the quality of the yarn and how it's, recycled materials can sometimes have a reduced quality. So what we try and do is completely mimic the quality of the original yarn with the recycled one, and we don't want to compromise on the quality of that yarn. So sometimes it's just not possible to do the 100% recycled material. And with that particular yarn, that's where we are with it. Obviously, you you have done hot hot spot hundred percent, but does it it does it behave nicely, or is it just in test it just doesn't? It's just like obviously you can, or is, just, um, is it down? I down? don't know the exact answer, but the the answer our technicians gave us was it wasn't performing as well. Right. Um, so we, okay. we did as much as we could to make that yarn perform well. Fine. Uh, hi. Doesn't polyester fibers get weaker every time you put them through recycling process? I think you answered that on your slide, but not really, because you can keep on recycling. Not really, no. Um, mm -hmm. with, with polymer recycling, what you have to do is you melt it back down. So you take those fibers that have been shredded mechanically, you know, they're all, you know, fibers have been shredded, but then it gets melted and then it gets spun through the machine. So that means you can, in theory, you know, no system is perfect, but you can, in theory, keep recycling. Add, okay. add infinitum. So obviously, there is a cost in there. There's, there's other chemicals yeah. involved. There, there are other things involved. So yeah, sometimes you can only recycle it so many times, really. Um, question, what yeah. type of recycling do you focus on? Chemical, mechanical? Does it affect the raw materials? I think it's a bit of both, right? You guys do? Yes, the, for, for our particular fibres, um, it would be ideal if, if chemical recycling could get going a bit more. Mm. Um, it, it helps. Um, especially when we're looking at lycra, because we cannot at the moment recycle lycra. Um, me mechanical recycling, elastoma has been a problem, you know, in the big machinery. Now we've, we've been talking to people who do mechanically shred fabrics, and there are some of them who can use uh, elastoma up to a certain amount in their processes, but it's not ideal. So the ideal gold um, situation we're heading towards is when you can recycle the lycra from post-consumer garments there you and go. that would Perfect. be our end game that would be what we're heading towards and what we're working towards but at the moment we're having to deal with mechanical uh, systems mainly someone actually asked a question about the, the bio lycra doesn't bio de degrade Degrades. as far as we know does it make recycling difficult yes yes i imagine so yeah. obviously there are systems in place you guys are trying your hardest right um, yeah, Bio biodegradable is, is, is a really interesting subject for, for particularly for man-made fibres. Cotton biodegrades, viscose biodegrades, but for a man-made fibre it wouldn't naturally biodegrade. We could put an additive in there which would allow our polymer to biodegrade, but it's what you're then putting into the soil. Right. So what you're then putting into the soil would be monomer and silicon oil and a bit of dye stuff and a bit of, you know, it's not putting good stuff into the soil. Um, so there's a big difference between biodegradability and compostability. So compostability is when you're giving the soil that's something nutritious and biodegradability you're not. And the other interesting piece of research we've done is to have a look at landfill. Mm. So uh, the idea is that 
cotton should biodegrade, but people who run landfill sites do not want biodegradability at all in their landfill because biodegradability causes methane gas. Right. And methane gas is a massive heater upper of the planet. So in landfill, what they try and do is pack it in tight and then seal it so they mummify it. Mm. Um, and that is not causing biodegradability and most garments end up in landfill. Uh, right. We've talked to people who compost and hardly any composters accept garments. So having had a look at the whole industry, um, we decided to go more around the research towards recycling rather than producing a biodegradable man-made fiber, which isn't really adding anything positive to mm -hmm. the ground. Um, um, thank you so much. Uh, uh, time's up. I know there's some more questions. Helen, if you don't mind, you can go through and maybe answer, answer them on chat. That'll be amazing. Thank okay. you for your time. It's lovely seeing you again. You know, I, I, it's you. a pleasure to always see you. And, and, I, hope, and, I, hope, and I hope you're well and, and, and your family is well too. Thank you so, so much, so Helen. Um, thank you.